We're going to ask our guy. He joins us now every single Tuesday, the all-city NFL analyst, Baldy, Brian Baldinger, with Baldy's breakdowns here on a football Tuesday. Baldy, perfect opportunity to join us today. Kyler Murray back activated for the Arizona Cardinals. Your initial reactions ahead of Atlanta this weekend. Well, I mean, it's. I think it'll be good to get you know the starting quarterback back. I, I don't know how he's going to look in his new offense and the timing he's going to have. All those kind of things you have to kind of give him a little bit of time here to get just get acclimated to the speed of the game. I mean, that's the big thing is he hasn't thrown a football since last year, you know, in a real game, and so the speed is is different. And Atlanta's coming off a tough loss. Um, they had plenty of chances to win last week, but they're a very good defense. I mean. Up until two weeks ago, they were top 10 defense, and they've got good players everywhere. And so, you know, it's a, it's a good test. But, I mean, I think for Kyler right now, I don't know. Like, it's not, you know, this regime, Monty and, you know, Jonathan, they didn't draft him. It's not their guy, but he can be their guy. Uh, I think this is, in some ways, it might be, you know, an eight-game audition for the future. And not, I don't know what's going to happen. Nobody does. But, you know, if I was Kyle, I'd go out there and ball out, show them that uh, I'm healthy, that uh, I haven't lost a step, and see if they can win some games. Sam Howell, Will Levis, who you compared very lightly to, to John Elway, I mean, as far as the arm strength, right? And then, of course, Joshua Dobbs, his miraculous performance on Sunday with really no prep time against this Atlanta Falcons defense. But those are the three quarterbacks that have handed this Falcons team their last three losses how can Kyler Murray tap into where those quarterbacks were successful? Because none of them are world beaters by any stretch. And, and Kyler Murray, probably the most talented quarterback that Atlanta is going to have faced here recently. Well, they've had a hard time with quarterbacks that can move right now. And so, um, you know, basically, uh, Will Evans beat him with the deep ball. Uh, they got over the top of him. Uh, you know, last week, Josh, as you saw for the first eight games, like, he's a lot more athletic than anybody thinks he is. I mean, he he's, he was the leading rusher in the game, and that included B. John Robinson and Tyler Al, Al, excuse me, Algier, everybody. I mean, he had 66 yards rushing, and most of them were scrambles, although, you know, he had the big touchdown runoff for scramble, uh, brought him from behind. It didn't start off well for him, but he overcame some early mistakes. Uh, you know, if I'm Kyler right now, I'm looking at all that going, okay, you know, I mean – I know I'm faster than Josh Dobbs. Look what he just did. So if I have to pull it down and run away from, you know, Landman, the inside linebackers there in Atlanta, like I'm pretty confident I could do that. So I think there'll be certain things that that uh, Kyler, when he looks at this film this week, can certainly glean from what you just said about, you know, the Atlanta's recent opponents. You talk about Dobbs and obviously what he did last week was was pretty unbelievable. I mean, and it's becoming a staple of his game here in the NFL's reputation, I should say, he came to Arizona short time frame, was immediately competent, if not more so, in just a few starts, and then what he does with Minnesota. And then in turn, Baldy, the Cardinals start a rookie fifth rounder against the league's top defense. Like, what do you make of it, you know, 5,000 foot view of, of how the Cardinals handled last weekend? Because it is a little baffling. It's like you've got Dobbs, familiarity with Cleveland. Why not let him finish, you know, handing the baton over to Kyler Murray? Was it just the prospect of a sixth and seventh round pick, or do you think more went into that kind of behind the scenes as, as it relates to Clayton too? Well, I can't imagine anything behind the scenes saying, you know, this isn't our type of guy. It's not our character. Like, I mean, I, right. I can't, that, none of that. But, you know, when, they, when teams give away players for assets, late round draft picks, all those guys that you're going to end up drafting are hit or miss. I mean, every once in a while, sixth round, you'll find a Jason Kelsey, a Tom Brady. I mean, but it's, it's a low percentage. I just don't understand the move at all, to be honest with you. Like, I, I understand Kyler's coming back, and he's the guy, and we want to play him. But, you know, Kyler's shown you that, you know, staying healthy has been an issue. And he's missed games. And who knows what he's going to look like. I, I'd like to have a guy that is good in the quarterback room, good in preparation, you know, it mingles with the whole team. I mean, you saw – how he was greeted in Minnesota after that comeback mm -hmm. win. I mean, they were revering him. They're, I, I'm hearing right now that Josh Dobbs jersey, they, they can't even print them fast enough right now. <laughs> like they're flying off the shelves. I mean, it's one game, but still, like the, it, it's a magnetic thing. I, I didn't understand Monty doing that move. 
Like, I, I can't see how it benefits anybody losing a guy like that. Is it doing right by the player? It, does that exist in the NFL, or is that too romantic to think about? Yeah, like, I, you know, there's, some of that stuff happens. Hey, you know, we're going to ship you out, give you a better opportunity to play. Um, I'm sure when Minnesota, when Quezzy called in Minnesota and said, hey, you know, we need a quarterback bad. We just lost ours. We're kind of like turning this thing around. Is Josh, Josh available? I mean, you know, you've got Minnesota over, you know, you got them over the woodshed here. Like mm-hmm. you should be, I mean, if you're going to make the deal, make the deal. Like he can, should command. He just started eight games and he proved that he can play. Um, I don't know. I, I felt like here, take him. You know, we, we've got our starting quarterback. Yeah. Right. I mean, how many backup quarterbacks are starting right now in this league? Well, the, the most baffling part is, you know, your alternative, if Kyler goes down, like you pointed out, has the previous two seasons, not significant injury, but, you know, an ankle, a hamstring that took him off the playing field. Yeah. Now your alternative isn't Dobbs. It's what you witnessed on Sunday, which was historically bad in Clayton Toon. And it was bad. I mean, the first interception, I mean, you know, it just sailed right into Denzel Ward's arms. I mean, he never saw the second one. He never saw Sione Taki Taki. That can happen to any young player. Never saw the underneath defender. Um, you know, balls are going to get stripped out of your hands when you're playing Cleveland. Look, I mean, I, I've i been saying this now because I was in Baltimore last week against Seattle, and it's almost like the NFC is a group of frauds because they play these, these AFC defenses right now in Cleveland, in Baltimore, in Cincinnati, uh, with the Jets, I mean, Miami is like come, and these teams in Kansas City, especially, like nobody can score against these defenses, and everybody looks bad against them. I mean, Baltimore just wiped up Detroit and Seattle, you know, in, at home in back to back games there, and it wasn't even competitive. They're so much better, and so I don't know, like it's uh, you go against Cleveland, um, as you know, as we just saw, like. Shutouts don't happen very often in this NFL, but I'm not sure Arizona could have scored if they had, you know, 10 more chances. No, I don't think so. Uh, what I do think is we've talked about Caleb Williams on this podcast over the course of this year in, in the training camp and, and pregame or preseason whatnot, and it really hasn't felt real because we just were awaiting Kyler Murray's return. Well, Kyler Murray's return is here. But the Cardinals are also eight games away from Caleb Williams, at least as it stands right now. They have the first pick in the draft. Is it as, as cut and dry for you, Baldy, is they get the first pick, you really have to consider him? Or could Kyler Murray, even without winning games, prove to this front office that he's worth keeping at $52 million? Because for me, it's like you have to go out and force the Cardinals' hand with wins to push them out of a position to take Caleb Williams or even a Drake May. Because as much as the Cardinals wanted to work with K-1, I mean, the problem, the faux problem actually is – relatively simple to understand it's just you just got to win to push yourself out of that aspect well there's also just the financial aspect i mean how many teams including the ravens and the seahawks and we go I mean, the, the, the first time the chiefs won they won with rook, rookie you know quarterbacks on rookie contracts i mean it's just a financial component to it yeah you know like if you're gonna rebuild this thing and it's a rebuild it's not like okay we're gonna you know go hit free agency and get competitive next year it's a rebuild mm-hmm. And you want to build the right way. You want to do it through the draft. Paris Johnson, like, do it. You know, uh, uh, stills. Like, you just want to get young guys in here and develop them. I mean, that's just the best method. And <clears throat> so you just don't want to have to overpay in free agency. It's just it, – it, th- there's times to go hit free agency. But if you get a chance – like, I've watched Caleb Williams a lot. I know him pretty good. I've worked with him. Um, the, the comparisons to Mahomes are going to be real. They're just going to be real. Like, they're already doing it during games, in games. Like, this is the release. This is him, you know, escaping the pocket. And I remember talking to Patrick. Um, you know, Lee Steinberg is his, is his agent. And I remember seeing him in Houston at the Super Bowl, the year that he was eligible. And I talked to him because I had done a bunch of Texas Tech games. And the situation is so similar. Like, they just fired USC's defensive coordinator. Well, they did that same thing with Mahomes. You know, at Texas Tech, they fired the defense coordinator. And – he had to score 50 for the Red Raiders have a chance to win. And yeah. it's like that with Caleb. They score 50. They still can't win. So they, so then you just start playing hero ball. And you're just like, well, I'll do whatever I can to, to put up 50 spot to give us a chance. It's kind of like that. 
And I feel like when people, and then, so I heard everybody detract from Mahomes. Oh, he mechanically, he's got to fix these. Mecha- well, okay. Well, sometimes this is the way you got to play the game right now. Sometimes you got to play it just loose and wild and free. And Caleb can do it. So that's off the subject. Like, it's a hard decision. If, Kay- mm-hmm. if Kyler comes out and balls out and he looks great like he did two years ago, it might be a tough decision. But I also think if you're trying to rebuild right now and you have a chance to get Caleb Williams, why still like it's early, but I believe it's going to be the first pick. Mm-hmm. It's going to be hard to say no to Caleb Williams. It's just going to be hard, regardless of what Kyler does. When we talk about Kyler Murray two years ago, and that's where you know everybody points to, especially the start to that season, 2021 yeah. through seven, eight games, he's at an MVP caliber level. What he was really doing in that season, what where he excelled was in the deep ball. And then last year where we saw him struggle probably the most he had in his professional career, the deep ball wasn't there. How could Kyler Murray get back on track in that facet of his game? Well, it'd be good if you had, you know, a healthy, you know, young, younger DeAndre Hopkins out there mm. to throw it to. I mean, it seemed like the, the, a lot of those deep balls are going in. Levis, Levis had an old D hop that worked out pretty well for him on the deep ball. <laughs> yes, he did. Uh, but, you, you know, you, you need guys. I'm, I'm, look, Hollywood is a deep ball threat. Yeah. But, you know, when you're his size, it's just harder, just harder to hit a moving target at that size mm. versus a guy that can really move. They had a lot great speed at wide receiver that year. Um, and so, you know, you're able to hit on a bunch of those shots. That's what he did, you know, with Hollywood at at, uh, at Oklahoma. So, I mean, they're reunited. Uh, you got to take your shots in this business. Otherwise, you're not really aggressive enough to win. You've got to you know, flip the field. You've got to get your defensive pass and holding calls and defensive interference penalties. You got to get those and you got to hit your, you got to take your shots to get your shots. It's just too hard to sustain offense in this business. Just nickel and diamond down the field. Would you be cautious running Kyler Murray at any extent this weekend? Cause it, I think everybody's going to hold their collective breath, just waiting for him to take off. But that's just, that's a facet of his game that you, you agreed to. And you and you rewarded with with this extension, like his mobility piece still has to exist in some way, shape, or form, does it not? Oh, totally, John. But you you can't legislate against injuries. You know, you you don't like mm-hmm. you're you're cleared, you're you're healthy to play. He needs to get hit because honestly, he needs that for his own confidence to get hit, get up off the ground, going, okay, I'm back. Because you can go through all the rehab you want, but anybody that's that had the ACL injury, um, when you return the action. You're you're a little bit nervous. You just are. Like it's a new knee. It feels different. But you guys got to know that it's stable and it's going to hold up and it's can do its job. And so he needs to get hit. Um, would I overdo it? You know, I don't think I would overdo it. But you certainly got to use him in the run game and make him defend everybody. Um, to, if if you don't play that style of football, then you're not playing to his strengths. You know, we talk about Hollywood Brown. Uh, we, we've seen a little bit of Rondell Moore, more in the run game than in the passing game as he's moved a little bit more into the slot. Like, whose game elevates with the return of Kyler Murray? It looks like Michael Wilson's going to come back from a shoulder injury. You got Trey McBride, who emerged a week before the Browns game with a 95-yard performance. Who do you think this Kyler Murray's return elevates? Well, look, I think one of those signature wins that they've had um, you know, prior to last year was that game against the Rams when they ran for 250 yards, Chase Edmonds, Kyler, they like the running game, they all benefited, you know, because somebody is, you know, who you're playing assignment football, who's got the quarterback, who's got the back, who's got the motions and all the stuff that happens with the window dressing. Um, I think the running game benefits immediately. And when the running game gets going, you're going to pay it off. You're going to pay the, the run game off with your play action passes. Mm-hmm. And so any of those guys, Wilson, McBride, Hollywood, like Rondale, like any of those guys could benefit if the play action pass really works once the running game gets, gets cooking. There's such a disparity in talent at the quarterback position from the AFC to the NFC. I mean, it's almost laughable that most of the young franchise quarterbacks in the NFL reside in the AFC, say for like a Jalen Hurts. Do you feel like the Cardinals like internally feel like or believe we can get Kyler Murray going again and we can get him right? This is a conference that's there to be had. This is a division that could potentially be there to be had because, I mean, by the time you take a Drake May or Caleb Williams and you develop said player, it could take 
three to five years again, you've already got a fan base that's endured multiple losing seasons. Like, I do think there is something to be said, Baldy. You get him right during these last eight games. You go into next year, I get it. You're still reconstructing this roster. But, like, tell me who's a better quarterback definitively if they get Kyler Murray back to where he was in the NFC right now. Well, I mean, look, there, there's Dak in Dallas. He had a great game the other day. Sure. I didn't finish the job. You know, Stafford's won a Super Bowl. Uh, you know, look, it, there is a disparity, but it's way more than the quarterback. I mean, one thing Jonathan Gannon knows, like, he left Philadelphia. That's a stable organization. Yeah. Right? They're built on winning. They win every year. So we, look, they had the 4 11 1 season when the quarterback, Carson Wentz, went sideways and they turned the reins over to jail. And, and they basically said, as an organization, we're never going to be 4 11 and 1 again, ever. Yeah. And I don't think they will be. And so you, you want to build sustained excellence. So that's a culture. That's the type of player you bring in. That's the building. That's the expectations. That's what Jonathan is trying to build. Like it would be good to win some games and upset some people and all that. But ultimately, like you're just trying to figure out which players are here long term. Like, you know, they've had a ton of coaching changes in Philly going back to Andy Reid. But like, you know, Kelsey's there and Brandon Graham's there and Fletcher Cox is there and Lane Johnson is there. Like they've had stability with their leaders on that team for over a decade. That's what you're trying to build. You're trying to like build pillars within your team that when you get free agents come in or rookies coming in or you made this trade, like they're greeted by guys that know what this whole thing is about. And they help sustain that excellence. And that's what you need to find right now. You know, I'm scrolling the gram and I see the all city underscore NFL just promotion. You, there's a video there. It kind of breaks my heart, Baldy. We watched it happen in, in, in live as far as the CJ Shroud experiment experience where he came back in that game. You guys are breaking it down. You and the coach, Anthony Gar Gargano, uh, on the all city NFL podcast, all NFL. We thought that this pick that Monty Austin Fort got for uh, Will Anderson trading down in the draft was going to be a premium one this season, and it just gets lower and lower. How many games yeah. is this Texans team going to win? Because you guys were breaking down where C.J. Stroud throws Tank Dell just open on an unbelievable pass. I mean, how good is he and how good are the Texans? And, and break it to our Cardinals uh, audience gently. Well, I mean, look, the, the league has been around for 104 years. And in 104 years, no rookie quarterback ever did what C.J. Stroud did last week. I don't care if it's Manning, pick a guy. That's that. That's perspective. Uh, he, had, he got the ball back down 37-33 with 46 seconds to go at the 25-yard line with two timeouts. And he took him down the field and hit Tank Dell for the game winner. Um, you know, 46-second drives, that's elite. But in addition, you know, Nico Collins is their number one receiver. He leads the National Football League in yards per catch. The last two years, Nico Collins is just a guy. Like nothing special, he's just on the like he's on the roster, but nobody thinks anything about Nico Collins. Now he's a number one. You know, I, I mean, I've seen Noah Brown in Dallas. Like he was an afterthought after the top three receivers. He's there. Like he had a hundred and something yards of receiving the other day. Tank Dell is a third round pick out of Houston. Played you know for a good good program in, in Houston with Dana there, but like he's an elite slot receiver right now. And, you know, he got two touchdown passes the other day. Um, the running game really hasn't kicked off yet. It's, it's, it's okay, but it's not great. It's not what we saw from Damian Pierce a year ago. This is an accurate thrower, very accurate. And he sees the field well, and he's got an elite release. And I think the sky's the limit for what he can do. It's a big time bummer holding that yeah. that draft it's, pick, but it sucks. I, I, I I'm so happy for them and their fan base, but I I was I thought we'd be eating good in the top ten with two top ten picks, and that just that's just not going to happen this year. And uh, you know, it's crazy what great quarterback play can do for an organization. What what Baldy just outlined. If you want more insight like that, you have to subscribe. Check out what they're doing over at the yeah. All NFL All City NFL podcast. Uh, we had a couple of the episodes on our feed. We were honored to do that and and introduce the audience to that. Now you got to seek it out for yourself, wherever you find podcasts. Baldy, as always, great stuff. Hey, Bo. Johnny, thanks, man. Thanks for having me. I'll talk to you guys next week. Sounds yeah, good. Thank you, Baldy.